Hey friends, the new year is the perfect time to take stock of those pantries and deep freezers and see what hidden treasures we've missed. I'm Mel and welcome to my kitchen. Tonight I'm sharing five dinner ideas, all made with ingredients straight from my fridge, freezer, or pantry. Lots of ideas on how you can customize them to what you have on hand and lots of tips to help you use it before you lose it. Let's get started. Today I'm making a dump and go crock pot meal. This is white chicken chili. I absolutely love this. And I had every single thing to make this in my pantry. Let's throw it together. I've sprayed my crock pot of course and I am going in with two cans of this chunk white chicken breast. These are the 12 and a half ounce sizes and I did drain these. And I'm just going to chunk up any of the really big pieces. Now I'm putting in two 15 and a half ounce cans of Great Northern Beans. I'm not draining these off, I'm putting everything in. And if you wanted to use chili beans here, you could. I like Great Northern, and that's what was over there in the cabinet that needed to be used. Gonna put in a can of Rotel. This is just diced tomatoes with green chilies. Didn't drain that either. And a 15 ounce can of whole kernel corn, not drained. While we're working on cans, I'm gonna put in one 10 ounce can of cream of chicken soup. This soup is pretty much made of all shelf stable ingredients for me. So I make it a lot when I'm cleaning out the pantry, but I like it. So <laughs> this and regular chili. So those are two things that um, I always have the ingredients for and I can throw together really quick and we like them, so it's good. Very pretty and festive looking in there, ain't it? Let's throw some seasonings in. That was black pepper. And I'm just gonna use just a touch of salt. I'm gonna use about a teaspoon of onion powder, about a teaspoon of garlic powder. This is super forgiving. Since I've got it handy, I'm gonna throw in, oh, a little bit of garlic. Maybe a big tablespoon. These guys right here are gonna do the heavy lifting tonight. This is McCormick's white chicken chili seasoning mixes and I am going to use two of them. They have a really, really great flavor. They're good to keep in your pantry. Great recipe helpers. I'm going to give this another little stir here. This is another space-saving product that I love to use, and these are broth bases. This one's a chicken base, and I've used them where it's like a paste and you keep it in the refrigerator. My dad got me this one because he sees me use this kind of stuff all the time. And it's a powder and I just keep it. You keep it in a cool, dark place. So I just, you know, keep it with my seasonings. And this makes 56 cups. Can you imagine how much space 56 cups would take up in your cabinet? And all you have to do is just mix it with really hot water and then you use it just like regular chicken broth in any of your recipes. And I'm using four cups of that chicken broth. Now that everything's in here, I'm gonna give it one final stir to get it all combined. I'm gonna pop this little lady's lid on and I'm gonna cook mine for about two hours on high. Everything in here is cooked. I just want it to get all really good and hot and bubbly. There's just something about the new year that tends to flip that reset switch with me. Now, I'm not a minimalist by any stretch of the imagination, but something I have noticed about myself is that I'm enjoying less. Less decor, less clothes, less dishes, less whatever to have to store and then manage. And along those same lines, I noticed that when I'm shopping, I'm just a whole lot more conscious about finding products that I can use in multiple ways or something that's reusable in some way. And that is how I came across Blue Land and their sustainably minded cleaning products. I've been using Blue Land products for a few months now and I am so impressed with them. I got started with the Clean Essentials Kit. It's all four of their best sellers in one convenient starter package. I loved having the foaming hand soap, especially over the holidays. And the Forever Bottle is heavy duty, but it's also so pretty. And the Soft Lemon Scent Hand Soap Tablet 
smells so fresh. The kit also comes with three reusable 24 ounce forever bottles for cleaning glass and mirrors, multi-surfaces and bathrooms, along with tablets for each of them too. And these bottles are so great. If you know what I mean, when you find a good spray bottle, it means everything. And they're so easy to use. Fill your forever bottle with warm to hot water up to the line, drop one of the tablets in, wait for it to fully dissolve, then put your nozzle on. No shaking or stirring needed. It is ready to go in minutes. And I love that I only had to purchase the tablets when I need more products, not another bottle. And Blue Land Refill tablets start at just $2.25. They work great, they are affordable, and they free up a lot of storage space for me too. You can save even more by purchasing your refills in bulk, and so you never run out of your most used products. They also offer a customizable subscription option. But best of all, Blue Land uses no single-use plastic in any component, from bottles, tablets, wrappers to shipping. If you'd like to try Blue Land, they have a great offer for my viewers today. Use the link in my description box below and you'll save 15% on your first kit. It's the perfect time to simplify your cleaning cabinet and routine and save 15% on your first kit just by using the link in my description box. Thank you so much Blue Land for sponsoring today's video. been about two hours and this is smelling delicious and I'm taking that eight ounce block of cream cheese I've cubed up that eight ounce block of cream cheese I'm gonna add that in give it a little stir around gonna pop the lid back on it probably take it about 30 minutes for that cream cheese to get completely melted down and combined and I make my white chicken chili a little bit soupier with a little bit more liquid than I do my regular chili because I love to have cornbread crumbled up in it. I mean, what's not to love about a pan of cornbread, but especially in this white chicken chili. I got this chili recipe a couple years ago from Moss Family TV. I'll leave Fallon's channel linked below. I'm sure you're familiar with her. They had some friends over and they made this chili out on the campfire. And this recipe came from their friend's mother. And that's how you find the best recipes, you know? My friends, mothers, cousins, brother, whatever. But this one's delicious and I love it. It looks like I have anything and everything pulled out here on my cabinets tonight. And I do. I'm actually going to make two meals. You rarely see me do this, but I'm really wanting some chicken soup. And I am going to make some non-bread pizzas for Patrick and Maddie. They're super easy, and I may have a bite of those too. I'm gonna start with the stone-fired non-breads. Anytime I find these marked down, I get them and throw them in the freezer. They're a little bit pricey if you don't buy them like that, but they're very delicious. I happened to find these when I was doing last minute Christmas shopping, and I just was thinking ahead about cleaning my cabinet and my pantries out after the new year. I always like to throw just a little bit of oil on them and then I'll spread it out. If you don't have non bread, you can use the um, refrigerated pizza crust. You could use a crescent dough and cook it up. I love the little cheap envelope of packaged pizza mix that you get at any grocery store. They're less than a dollar. You just mix it up. But like I said, if you have been here any amount of time, you've seen this is my favorite way to use up leftovers. I'm gonna make mine two different ways. I'm gonna put some cheddar cheese on this one. This is gonna be a crack style pizza. <laughs> it's gonna have chicken, bacon, and ranch. Then over here on this one, I'm probably gonna finish out this bag of Monterey Jack cheese. This one's gonna be a barbecue chicken type pizza. Next, I've got some rotisserie chicken that I thawed out. I've already pulled about a cup out of it for my soup, and I'm gonna use the rest of it on these pizzas. That is another great tip. If you've cooked up chicken, you got a little bit left over, freeze it. You can pull it out for stuff like this or salads. I've really enjoyed splurging every now and again on these rotisserie chickens that they've already got the meat pulled off for you. It's just all the white meat. So this was one that I had some leftovers. I just used a little bit out of it and then I didn't get to do what I wanted to with it. So I just froze it and it thawed out perfect. 
Even though this rotisserie chicken is seasoned, I'm gonna pull out some of my favorite seasonings. I love the Anti No No seafood seasoning. It has some flavors I love, like paprika and brown sugar, and a little bit of like a lemony flavor. It is great on seafood, chicken, or anything. And I'm gonna put a little bit of that on Maddie's chicken bacon ranch one. And Patrick has been loving this barbecue rub from Bucky's. He puts this on everything. So I thought I'd sprinkle woo, a little or a lot of that on his chicken. <laughs> but you can see these are some I'm running low on. I'm trying to get rid of this stuff. It feels good to clean out the pantry and start fresh. Both of them are going to get a little bit of bacon. I always keep these real bacon pieces in my pantry. They're great on salads and they're good to throw on something like this when you don't want to take the time to cook up bacon. But you'll want a little bit of a bacony and a smoky flavor. As far as sauces, I'm going to wait and put the ranch dressing on Maddie's afterwards because I know that she is going to want hers cold. But as far as Patrick, I know him too. And he is going to want lots of barbecue sauce. And he's going to want it nice and warm. And he's been loving these Duke's sauces. He's been using them a lot this year. Of course, if you have onions, mushrooms, some spinach, any kind of uh, fresh veggies that you need to use up, put them on here. But honestly, I don't have any fresh veggies right now. I'm cleaning this place out here. I'm really trying hard to use up what I've got on hand. I'm gonna put this in a 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes. I think this chicken bacon ranch would be delicious with some avocado on it, maybe some purple onion. Same thing over here. I think the barbecue would be great with a big red onion, but you know, they like their stuff kind of plain. They ain't necessarily like me, but these are perfect. I'm gonna let them sit here for a minute and then slice them up for them. I'm starting with a little bit of butter and oil in a pot here. I love these soup starters. I have this one opened. About half of the bag is left. This is a Cajun style onion, celery, and green bell peppers. I should use this because it's open. But I also have this blend. And this is just a regular like home style soup starter with onions and celery, but it's got carrots instead of green peppers. That's what I want with my chicken soup. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to pour in maybe a cup of this. I know the whole purpose of this video is to clean out the freezer in the pantry, but you know the heart wants what the heart wants. I'll just store them. I'll just put that other little bag right in here with the Cajun one. I got two soup starters in the freezer still for whenever I want to make some more. That's something that I love to keep on hand. Number one, it helps when you're in a time crunch, and a lot of the work's just done for you. They're shelf stable, they're always ready, they're not gonna spoil on you. And I actually think, I'm just gonna toss a little bit more of that in there. And I should let you know, I'm making about half of the recipe that I'll have linked for you below. This is sauteed down nice and soft. I'm gonna throw me in a nice little spoonful of garlic. Definitely wanna keep that moving. Just let it get fragrant, not scorched. And let's go ahead and throw in about half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Now I'm going to pour in these four cups of chicken broth. I'm going to bring this up to a boil and then I'm just going to cover it, reduce the heat, and just let it simmer like this for about 10 minutes. You could definitely cook this in the crock pot. Just put everything right here up to this point in the crock pot and throw you in just some fresh chicken breast and let it cook until those chicken breasts are done. Then shred them up in there and move on with the tortellini whenever you're ready to eat. It would just take it a couple minutes to cook up and you could pour it over into it. But honestly, this just takes about 20 or 25 minutes here on the stove. Now. I'm gonna take this cup of chicken that's already cooked, stir that in, and I have a 10 ounce bag of these refrigerated tortellini. I'm gonna toss those in, and they just take about four minutes to cook. So 
So I'm going to increase my heat just a little bit, put this lid back on here, and I'm just going to cook this about four minutes. It won't take long at all for that tortellini to get done. You could definitely use a shelf-stable tortellini like this that I have here. That's what I need to be using, but this will last a long time. You would just need to cook it a little bit longer in your chicken broth. This one I had to get used up because the refrigerator tortellini doesn't have quite as long of a shelf life. When I bought these, they were buy one, get one free, and I was using it to make that crispy baked tortellini bites. If you haven't seen that, that was a Christmas appetizer video, but I was thinking I would make two bags of them. There was no way we could eat two bags of that. It made so much. So I had this in the fridge and I needed to get it used up. I seasoned mine with a little bit of salt and pepper. Feel free to put any other vegetables in here. I think some spinach would be great. You could hit this with a little bit of lemon and give it a really bright flavor. You could put a little bit of heavy cream in here and make it a creamy chicken tortellini soup. This was like a comfort food, but just a little bit healthier comfort food <laughs> for me. And the pasta will soak up a lot of your broth. So if you're making a big pot of it, I would just put in enough pasta to eat it that night and add more when we reheat. When I'm doing a pantry clean out, I always have a few things that I normally have to cycle through. That's extra cans of chili, extra cans of tuna, and every now and again a canned ham. And it's no secret here that we love chili buns, but I don't always have buns on hand. What I do have on hand at most all times are flour tortillas and some kind of corn chip or tortilla chip. So let my chili get heated up and I'll show you what I like to do when I'm trying to clean out chili, tortillas, all the different things in my cabinet. I'm also using up these fancy, kind of plasticky looking plates that we had left over from wedding showers and stuff where my daughter got married back in the fall. When I'm cleaning out my cabinets or trying to use up what I have, don't forget about stuff like this. No need in letting it sit around and go to waste. Honestly, the next time I'm getting ready to host something like this, I probably wouldn't be able to put my hands on these anyway. So might as well use them up. Got my flour tortilla laid out here. Now I'm just gonna lay some Fritos down. Putting some shredded cheddar cheese. You can put anything you want in here, but this is kind of how good old Sonic made them. That's where we fell in love with them. It might be overstuffed. I'm gonna fold in the sides and fold it up. And there's so many other things that you can also do with chili. If you just wanna open a can of chili and put it over a bed of rice, if you like rice, most people have that on hand. You can do chili over a baked potato. There's just a million things you can do with a can of chili. But here is a Frito chili cheese wrap. You just pick her up and eat her. Tonight I'm making a taco mac and cheese. Literally, this is all it takes. These three ingredients and a pound of ground beef. It's delicious. We start this recipe by cooking up two of these boxes of shells and cheese. These are like the Velveeta shells and cheese. They come with this cheese packet. That's all you gotta put in it. Then, as soon as my meat defrosts, I'm gonna fry it up over here. While I'm waiting for these things to cook up, I wanna talk to you just a little bit about my pantry and kinda how I work it. I have the kind of pantry that I would call a working pantry. I don't have anything real extensive like a survival type prepper pantry where I have food, you know, to go like five years or 10 years or anything like that. I guess really a better description of it would be like a rainy day pantry or a short term pantry. So for me, that means that I find myself using a lot of the same ingredients over and over again. So I buy things when they're on sale and I can get them at the cheapest price and I buy them in bulk. And buying them in bulk to me would be maybe buying anywhere from four to six at a time. I usually do a good little stock up haul every month 
really now every two or so months because I'm not cooking for as many people now. But I buy those, like I said, when they're on sale so I can get the best price. Then I don't have to buy that item like as needed. I already have it on hand. That means that any given time when I look in my pantry, I'm gonna have anywhere from 10 to even 20 cans of the things I normally buy. I've been shopping like this for years. It's not something that I have built up over time, but it is rotating because when you have that many canned items, they do stay good for a long time, but you need to be eating out of that pantry too because the one thing that I hate is to waste food. So if I'm buying these things, I'm only buying things that we'll really eat that I know I'll use. So every few months, I look in there and whatever I have the most cans of, I'll make some recipes with those things. We'll get them used up and then guess what? The next time I do my stock up, I'm gonna buy those things again. They're constantly rotating with the oldest purchased item coming out first. So like I said, it's not a long-term survival situation. It's a short-term rainy day situation. So when I say rainy day, it literally can mean a rainy or snowy or just any day. I don't have to run out to the store and buy something to make any given night. I'm always going to have something to pull out of my freezer and out of my pantry and put something together. And it can also mean maybe you've had a, um, an expected expense and you want to cut some corners. Well, you know, you have a working pantry, a well-stocked pantry. You can skip the grocery store, you know, for maybe a month, you just have to buy, you know, milk or something like that. But like I said, I call it a working pantry because I'm constantly working through the items. I call it a rainy day pantry because it can allow me to divert funds from the grocery budget if I need to or want to for something else. And it's short term because a lot of the things will last, you know, a couple of years, but I'm constantly using these things, so I'm regularly restocking them as well. As long as you are living and eating and cooking, you're gonna be working through your food. Like you probably noticed, I got some bananas back here. They're on their last leg. So tonight, I think I'm gonna throw some banana bread together. I should have everything I need to make that tonight too. And maybe that'll help you if you don't know where to get started in building a pantry, I say start with what it is your family likes, what it is you cook with often, and encourage you that you don't have to buy huge quantities of things. You can start small and build up, and it can be scalable for your home. Nothing irritates me more, like I said, than to waste food. And why would I want to stockpile tons and tons of food just to let it go bad? I just feel like we need to be eating out of what we're stocking. That was my pound of ground beef here. I got most of the grease off of it. I put in one can of Rotel. I did not drain that. I'm sprinkling in one envelope of taco seasoning. This is something I keep in my pantry. All these items are. I'm gonna throw in about a quarter cup of water just to make it a little bit more juicy. And I'm just gonna stir this all together. I'm using my macaroni spoon. I was draining and putting together those boxes of macaroni while talking to you. And I'm just gonna let this come to a little simmer here and cook for about five minutes. Now you're gonna take your macaroni and just dump it all right in here and stir it in. Literally, this is the hardest part of this recipe for me. Is holding this big pot up with one hand. <laughs> this makes a whole lot. We had this for family dinner night, gosh, four or five months ago. It was still hot weather, I remember. And I've been thinking about it ever since. Well, if you've heard anything in the background tonight, Patrick and my son-in-law, Ryan, they're in the garage hanging a couple pieces of new sheetrock. And I thought, you know what? No better time to have it again than when everybody's gonna be here. So when Callie gets off work, she'll be here and we can share it for family dinner night again. It's done guys. 
I'm gonna turn my stove eye way down. Put a lid on it. We'll be ready to eat. And we all enjoyed this just as much as the first time we had it. Pairs perfectly with a big salad, feeds a crowd, everybody loves it. If you like macaroni and cheese and you like tacos, you will love it. Super quick and easy. Now, the banana bread was not to be had that night. If you have been around here a while, you know I've had a little saga with my oven and the electronics. Well, it happened again a little bit worse. So, Patrick says, Mom, it's time for you to get a new oven. So, guys, to be continued, stay tuned to the saga. But you know what? Everything's going to be just fine. Thank you guys for being here. If you enjoyed tonight's video and you got some kind of value out of it, I would love it if you would give it a big thumbs up. When you do, look down there and see if you see all kinds of sparkle and confetti. That's something new that YouTube's rolled out, and I just think it's a kick. I appreciate you being here. I don't ever take for granted the time you spend with me. Let me know below some of your favorite ways to clean out your pantry and your freezer, creative and inventive ways that you use it so you don't lose it. Friends, I hope you have a blessed week, and until next time, I send you love from my kitchen.